Caller on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hey, Forrest, my name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty. What have you got to say about what's happening? Oh, I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you Is he Scottish? for free pizza here at I have no idea. Well, Brian, There's a mud there that more perfects the free pizza. Really don't have to though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. So Are you motherfucker? You, the pizza we Mark. have. Hang up, oh, if we can. Hang up. He's literally trying to advertise his fucking pizza joint during a murder scene. That was pretty tasteless, I have to say. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else off coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our it's not really the time and place, mate. Can I not... Can, how do I get him off? Come on down to Pizza this weekend. Because of this game, we have to wait till they're done talking. Damn it, you're just calling in to advertise your shop. Oh, for... Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Nope. In flight no. check time. Christ. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. Done. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American dream. No town. way we could have done that. Mayor. Take a swing. It was on the f other fucking side of the page. It was open this entire time. Name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this we could have saved her. God, what a genius. 100% grade A asshole. Melinda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Oh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from The Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? 
Leslie's driving to Henderson right now. She left me in charge. Why on earth is Leslie? Oh, never mind. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. And this punk was He's not wrong a disappointing now. twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... So this game is set in the 80s? Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure you were how saying? I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? Why would you want to call the killer? Call one of them. Draw the killer away. I could work. Exactly. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? If it saves your that fucking life, mate, shut up. You're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. Thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. You... you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell... I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. I'll go pick up that map, then. Go, Forrest! The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay, go to the office on the other end of the hall, grab the fax from the machine, easy. This must be it. Right, but what on earth am I looking at? I think it's a map of his office. Wait, how do I zoom in on the fucking image? Ah, uh, fuck, I don't know. Maybe put it on the table off. Just put it on there and... Will that work?
Right, we're going to have to do it from here. So where the hell is he then? Mm -mm. Uh, well, he could be maybe in here. Or he did this spot. Wait, you need a fax machine to send to another fax machine, right? So yeah, that's what this. it is. Well, you he could be in this room where that fax machine is, but he needs to get to here where this arsel is standing. And there's like four phones, one in his room, one here, one there, one there. So, fuck, maybe we can get him into this room or that room, because this room might be fucking terrifying. I'd say, is it the editor's one? That's far, well, that's far away from the stairs. You know, we could get him there while he's at that phone. He could try to run that way. All right. I have no idea. Now, let's, let's try to answer him. He's on line three. Hey, did you get the fax? Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's What's that supposed to mean? Him. Avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. Wait, wait, so he's there. He's there, isn't he? We want to draw the killer so, away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Wait, should it be the editor's office? That's around the corner. Yeah. Call the editor's office. The extension is zero three. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Oh crap, this one I don't know. I'll leave, I'll leave the, the, this one to you. First, second, third. I would say the kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah, that makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. I'm getting chills. He's actually heading to my office. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then. I move. I'll call when I get there. Do you think he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. I, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quietly. Uh, first, second, third. Third? Third, we can try to lock him in a room. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, 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 I got it. I thought he found him for a second then. Jesus Christ. We keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, 
A secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Not the same, Peggy. Peggy, I don't think now is the time to be playing around like that. You're right. Sorry, Forrest. Kids, we're in the big time now. I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god. Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Um, I don't know. <coughs> ah. Could there be a radio in there? Or fucking so we're a fast alpha one. We don't want him to die. Maybe, maybe the radio? I was gonna say, what is the most logical answer for a secret archives? Probably a radio, because this is the 80s. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. I'll call you back once I've got the radio. Oh, it's the line. Stop talking this works, we might back on the whole town. Tony. How is he supposed to stay annoying if they don't have like portable phones like to walk around? Old phones back First then like a strap. Don't get excited yet. We can't let her get too excited. There's still a lot to do before we celebrate. Let's just see how it goes first. What do you mean? He's not out of there yet. He's still got to find the radio, unblock the stairs. I know, but we've got a plan for how to do that. And oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just going to turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maybe can you keep your voice low? Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive... Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! You just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait! We're the radio! We can just be quiet and Yeah, be that's ready. literally what I was thinking. Why not just shut up and then give him the sign? Yeah, sure. 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? Uh, what one? And that's correct. You got yeah, that's right. Good. Got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Oh, oh God. Is this the final decision? Is he going back to the kitchen? Uh, uh, I have no idea. Bedroom. Are you sure? Uh, I think yes. Yes. He, he, I don't. We don't know if he's went back to uh, the he's still in the archive, so the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? 
second chance. Uh, <laughs> Tony. I'm sure make a call. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay. Calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Don't yeah, jinx it, Peggy. Draw the killer in. I don't fucking know. What what could be said? Um I don't want to choose the thought of Oh code a killer a uh, jackass. Well should we do it for the sake of it? Yes. Yes. I'll just call the whistling man a jackass. That'll get his attention. That's the plan, right? <laughs> sure is. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal. I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far now. Oh, I don't bloody know. Okay, okay, we have two options. He said it's either the cubicles or the cabinet, but if we choose that, we're gonna have to literally have patience and time it. It's between two or four. I don't know which one to pick. Tony, Sorry. what do you think? Uh, I don't... Let's go with that, but if we... Alright. Happen it. Alright. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Now, now, now. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. Hey, whistling man. Jackass. You think you're something special, huh? Well, guess what, pal? You got another thing coming. He's Go. dead. Uh, let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks, we'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track. Well, this is going to be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. Did it occur to you that maybe I like being a mystery? Too bad. Question one. Tell me about your family. What? <laughs> Come on, Peggy. That, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any... siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. 
Oh, that's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. Well, okay, so the so the Where the f*** she going? Um... Alright, okay. no, she dropped the keys, Mark. Turn around. That's not opening. It's not actually a bad place, to be honest. Are we the actual only two people there? Hey. Play on. We should at least have someone at the front desk. And another tape. Why would you have someone at the front desk after midnight? Why would you have like two people so they can literally also work the night shift? Because isn't it not creepy? I don't know. Much? I don't know anything. Plus, isn't it not also creepy just having two random people in a studio at night at 12? It's a radio station in. enjoy that what the hell was that I oh Forrest we're still on air say something folks the oh <clears throat> folks the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago I don't know how the killer could get from the newspaper to KFAM so quick but be careful Gallows Creek Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us. Forget how he managed to get to your studio so quick. How did he manage to cut yours and Peggy's voice and to make an, that sentence? 